guys, welcome to ITS Tactical. Today we're going to be reviewing the watch that I wear all the time, which is a Casio DW6900 watch. Um, I get a lot of questions inquiring about what kind of watch I'm wearing in the video, so today I'm going to show you. Uh, let's take a look at the watch and we'll get into detail on what the different features are of it. So, if you take a look down here, we will look first at um, the watch itself. What I really like about the Casio G-Shock watch is uh, is really the dependability. And I've had this particular G-Shock for about six years now. And I'm on my second G-Shock. The first G-Shock I had um, crapped out on me when, I guess, I was shortly after I got out of the Navy. Um, G-Shocks are actually issued in buds as well. I got one in second phase, uh, but it was the DW6600 version, which the only difference I can tell is um, between the 66 and the 69 is the the uh, watch face itself. Just the, uh, I guess, there's a little more space on the actual digital readout. Nothing's different in terms of the functionality of the watch, but um, it also has a metal buckle here instead of a black plastic buckle. Um, that's one of the primary differences between the two versions. And now, actually, uh, Casio is making a DW6900... MS, I believe. It's kind of a military version of the, the classic 6900 design, and it's got uh, blacked out features like the buttons are black and the readout is black too. I don't know if you'd be able to see this, but I'll push the, uh, the light. Maybe you can see that. I don't know. But uh, essentially when you push that button on the military version too, it's kind of a red illumination rather than the blue or the teal illumination that, that this is given off. I actually like the illumination on this. Um, it can be pretty bright though in some situations if you're in a blacked out room for, for one, obviously. Um, but one, kind of the couple of features that I find myself using a lot on the watch are uh, obviously telling time. The date is nice to have when looking at the watch. Um, and then when you cycle through the modes here by pressing the mode button, you get to the alarm, which I use occasionally. It's not very loud. Um, and I find I have to have the watch off to order. I'll actually wake up to it. Um, it's got a countdown timer as well as a, a stopwatch or a chronograph, which is nice too. I always time myself when I'm running and things like that. Um, I, I particularly don't like watches with a lot of features on them. Um, I find that the watches that are feature laden, so to speak, um, have more of a potential of, of getting damaged or um, overall crap it out on you just like uh, <laughs> just like my first one did. But uh, anyway, I think what contributed to the first one um, crapping out on me was that the uh, I used to, in the Navy, we were kind of experimenting with um, these little lens covers. And if you've ever seen one of those military angle head flashlights, these are the small discs, discs that you can put in there to change the, the color of the light. And what we do is you You'd cut this and open up the back plate on the watch, and you can take the guts of the watch out and slip one of these um, inserts in there, and it will hide the illumination. You, it's really hard to read with these on there, especially when they get scratched up, but it, it does cut down on the, uh, the light pollution that will be emitted from the watch when you press the back light. Um, another thing you can buy are these little gel inserts, uh, commonly for photography or, um, I think, they make colored window tinting too. You can actually slip this kind of stuff inside the bezel. There's actually a small space in there and you can see that these just kind of slip in. So that's another option too. But like I said, they're now making that military version of the 6900 which um, has the red illumination. So they've kind of answered the call of, you know, the, the noise pollution or the, sorry, the light pollution from the, uh, the G-Shock. Um, another thing that I use on my G-Shock is this little Sunto Clipper. This is a, a small watch compass. It's actually got a rotating bezel. What I like about it is it just gives you a, a compass without having to utilize a digital compass on like, say, the, the Casio Pathfinder. I have buddies that have the Pathfinder, which is kind of a, an upgraded version of the G-Shock. And uh, I've got buddies that love them and they hate them. So um, I'm more of the opinion that Having a digital compass is just one more thing that will go wrong on you, and I like having a, a standard compass on my watch. Um, I find that it doesn't really get in the way either. Um, one thing I will suggest is, if you can zoom in here and see the edge here, what I did is I actually melted 
this little part on the clipper here because that actually digs into your wrist so I actually kind of melted mine down a little bit that's something you may want to do if you invest in one of these I think the little clipper compasses these are like 12 bucks I actually have the package I'm on my third one of these clipper compasses too um, the first one um, got demagnetized because I wore my wedding ring on my watch all the time when I'd work out and I think that just having that wedding ring next to it kind of demagnetize it. I have no idea, actually. I'm just kind of speculating at that point. But um, the second one I actually lost when I took it off to go shooting one day. But they come in two different versions. Um, they all come in this package, which comes with a little watch band. So you can use the clipper separately if you want to put this little Velcro wristband and wear the compass separately. I've never done that. Obviously, as you can tell, it's still in the package. But... Uh, this was $12.50 at REI. So, and then the actual G-Shock itself, I believe they run about $80 bucks now, $79. But Tactical Distributors is a great place to, to check out the, the Casio G-Shocks if you're interested in getting one. Um, I know they carry them for sure, and they are one of our supporters, so definitely try to support them. Uh, anyhow, the Clippers are a great option for a compass, as I was saying. The other type of clipper that they make is a glow-in-the-dark one. So the bezel, instead of being black, is a glow-in-the-dark bezel. And the face of it is black. And I believe the directions, the north, east, and west, are all uh, glow-in-the-dark as well. But I used to have one of the glow-in-the-dark ones. That's the one I lost, actually. And uh, I just kind of felt that it wasn't really important having a glow-in-the-dark one, per se. But... I'm definitely a fan of wearing one, and I don't really even notice that it's on my wrist. So it looks bulky, but as I said, I don't even notice it. But so there you go. That's kind of my uh, my quick review of the the Casio 6900. As I mentioned, I've had this watch for six years, and I'm still on the same battery. Um, the battery is supposed to last two years, I believe, and I'm still on the same battery. So there you have it. Um, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed the little review of the Casio 6900, and I will now refer to this video if anyone asks what kind of watch I'm wearing. So thanks for watching.